Mostly states are holding the line, um, trying not to commit um, what may be phantom revenues to ongoing spending programs, trying to continue coming out of the revenue hole that was created by the Great Recession. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the recession and recovery. How are state and local budgets doing? With state and local tax revenues falling faster and further than in any time since the Great Depression of the 1930s, state budgets have been lean in the past few years. They've been shaped by budget cuts, reduced services, and massive layoffs. There has been some good news, though. Six straight quarters of rising state revenues. It's time for cautious optimism, notes fellow Tracy Gordon. The revenue picture looks a lot brighter than it did over the past four years, really. Revenues are rebounding. They were up by about 6% in the last quarter for which we have data. The income tax looks particularly strong, registering double-digit increases. So it's definitely improved, but I think there's some cautious optimism out there. Um, there's pent-up demand for services. States have been cutting over the past four fiscal years. And so I think governors are trying to embrace uh, the fact that the economy might be slowly recovering, but they don't want to take any steps to uh, you know, change their budgets and start spending money that they might not really have on hand. Well, Tracy, even if things are getting better, and arguably they are, it's likely to take some time before the states can breathe a sigh of relief. In fact, there are some out there who say that this is still a day of reckoning for states and their budgets. States were really walloped in the Great Recession that uh, they lost 30 percent of their revenues in 2009, including tax revenue and investment income for pension funds. So they really had to scramble to get out of that revenue hole. It looks like they're now coming out of it, but they had a long way to climb. So even though tax revenues have been improving, they're still below where they were before their peak, um, and especially if you adjust for the cost of providing services. Um, so, so it is a day of reckoning in that um, you know, states have been forced to do more with less over the past four fiscal years. Even though the picture is improving somewhat, um, as I said, they're climbing out of a deep hole. Um, and so you see a lot of efforts to sort of rethink the way that services are provided, to redesign government. Um, so in that sense, I think that there is a day of reckoning here, but that can be a good thing. It can mean more innovation, um, learning how to provide services better. Well, what's leading um, this turnaround that you mentioned. The private sector has been slowly adding jobs, not as many as we need in, in order to come back from the 12 million jobs that we lost, but each little bit definitely helps states in terms of increasing uh, income tax revenues and also people feeling more confident about the economy, spending more money, uh, you know, in some cases perhaps uh, realizing stock market gains that we've seen over the last couple of months. So all of those things are helping states. Um, but there's also a, a states are continuing to lose jobs themselves um, because of the revenue losses that they face and the continuing need to make ends meet. Um, they're losing jobs at a lower rate than they have been over the past uh, year or two, um, but they continue to lose jobs even though the private sector is adding them. Well, states are required to balance their budgets, so how do they do that? Uh, are there ways other than raising uh, taxes and cutting services? People often say states are statutorily or constitutionally barred from running a deficit, that they have balanced budget rules. In fact, there's some wiggle room there. Um, states can sometimes uh, borrow short term and then roll those debts over into the next year. Um, those balanced budget rules exclude capital expenditures, they exclude pension funds. Um, but in general, uh, states are expected to balance their budgets and in fact there's some evidence that capital markets and voters penalize them when they fail to do so. So there's been a lot of attention to, um, to in particular, uh, ways that states balance their budget in the current recession um, to satisfy these balanced budget rules that basically require that they make ends meet, that revenues equal expenditures. And so um, you've heard of things like uh, Arizona uh, selling off its capital building and leasing it back, or Illinois floating bonds to make its annual pension contributions. You know, these are not generally viewed as great budget policy. On the other hand, there are things that you have to do when you're up against a wall, you know, much like a household or even the federal government when it was coming up against the debt limit. There are you know, so-called cash management strategies that might not be things that you do on 
a sunny day, but when it's raining, it's, it's the best alternative that you've got. We ended 2011 with the Congressional Super Committee failing to trim the federal budget, meaning there are going to be some automatic spending cuts. What does this mean to state and local governments, especially when you factor in that any pain that the federal government feels, they feel on a delayed basis? Automatic cuts to discretionary revenues, both defense and non-defense, um, are going to impact some states. So you might remember a couple months ago there was some concern in particular about states in our region, in the Washington DC area, that depend on federal contracts. But there are other parts of the country too, the West, where they have a lot of federal employees or federal land. And so you could imagine that there are some places that are going to feel the disproportionate impact of those cuts. But I think it's important to remember that the automatic triggered uh, spending cuts are going to exempt really big ticket items for states like Medicaid. So governors were very concerned about the super committee and any kind of deal they might have struck on long-term deficit reduction and what that would mean for the federal state partnership. Um, it looks like uh, you know they can breathe a sigh, of, a sigh of relief now because there were not major changes made to the tax code or to major spending programs. But these, uh, these smaller cuts to discretionary spending are going to impact some states more heavily than others. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu slash mobile.